rock stars, Lid Shaw coming to you from the floor of Winter Nam in Anaheim, California, 2018. I'm standing here with David from Wireworld Pro Audio. How you doing, David? Hi, fine, thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Uh, you guys are making some really cool stuff, high-end cables. I think we all know when it's nice to have a really high-quality cable in the studio. Sometimes we need a little bit more education about why it really matters, and I, I will let you kind of guide us around. Tell us a little bit about who you guys are and what you're doing here. I, I'll be happy to do that. We, we are actually very different than the other cable companies in one essential way. We test cables. Nice. You actually check to make sure that they're working. That's pretty, that's unique. No, we test them for fidelity. That's the okay. difference. Okay. So and what I'm talking about is comparing the signal before it went through the cable to the signal after it went through the cable. Nice. This is the only test that will tell you what a cable loses. And that's the main thing we actually need to know. Comparing one cable for another could be interesting, but it's not going to tell you what either cable is actually doing to the sound. Right, okay. that's a good point. So if you compare two cables, but both of them are changing the input to the output, then it's not really, really the same thing. You really don't know what you right? lost, which is the most important thing, because yeah. we're trying to buy minimum loss. So I've been doing these tests now for 38 years, nonstop. And, and what I learned is that there's a problem with cables. Transient response is not good enough. And that's why small differences between cables can be heard. It's because yeah. they're distorting the sound in a way that's pretty significant to the way we interpret sound. So what was needed was a cable with less electromagnetic loss. This was actually identified as the problem of, of cables back in the 1970s. Eddy current resistance is actually the worst part of the electromagnetic loss. And if we know what eddies are in a river, they're swirling currents, they are not following the main flow. This is literally the same thing going wrong in a cable. Like Eddie Van Halen is okay, but eddy yeah, currents, eddy currents is not so good. This is the eddy currents and inductive loss are the reason why if we feed a, an impulse or a square wave through a cable, we lose fidelity. We can just you can just see that the waveform is not being reproduced well. Um, there's Engineers mostly haven't been aware that you could just look at the waveform because they were taught in school that since our hearing sensitivity basically only goes up to about 15 kilohertz, that if you can cover a sine wave up to 15 kilohertz, your fidelity is preserved. Psychoacoustic research shows that that was off by a factor of three. Okay, all right, all right. I was going to interject that I had a, a chance to interview David Blackmore years ago, and, I, and he sort of educated on me on, on how important frequencies are that are way above what we can measure as hearing too. And, and I'm, you know, I'm going to echo that, exactly. And, and people are surprised to see how slow cables are when they actually do the test. Well, so uh, give us an understanding of how it is that you make such fine cables. What, what helps your cables well, sound better like that? So, so I was working on reducing this eddy current resistance for a long time. But for the first 30 years of my career, the best that I could do was use the best existing design, but it came from the 1930s, it was invented in Germany, just concentric tubular conductors. Yeah. Now, I could I could preserve the signal better with that, but we could still hear the loss in the cable. It wasn't like I could get rid of this problem. And so eventually I realized that there was a way I could create a structure where all of the strands could be parallel. And instantly, for a given amount of money, I could make a much better cable to the point where we've now got a super efficient new structure and all of the strands are parallel, the transient response is dramatically faster, and now we can insert a length of cable against a direct and compare them directly and the loss is actually minimal. Wow, that's pretty cool. So essentially inside the cable, Rockstars, if you have a shielded cable, for example, you have, uh, and I, I'm describing your cable without having seen the inside, but you might have an outer shield, but inside you have the uh, the, the signal. You're no? starting wrong. I'm starting wrong. All right, good, good. Straighten us out here. Basically, the most important thing is that the signal carrying strands are all separated and completely parallel. We use completely different solutions for shields. Everything else is it's different. All right, cool. So my electrons are going straight from the input to the output, basically. Right. right. And that's the solution. So what, what took me three decades was figuring out how to do that in a practical manner, and getting it to work right. All right, well, I think we may just have to trust that you know how to do well, that well, without yes, knowing we, how to do it ourselves, right? Anybody can do a proper test of cable, and almost nobody does it. And that, that's the thing that really surprises me, because it's really an audio test. 
So quick question for you. Um, our listeners, the rock stars, are making records in their home studios. They're making records in pro studios. Um, is there some way for them to test what they're using now to discover whether or not they might need a cable yes. like yours? And, and in fact, a, a test I highly recommend, I've been using all these 38 years, is using high-end, really high-quality headphones and headphone amp, shortest jumpers you can make with XLR contacts. Get everything where you can get used to that level of fidelity. Plug it into your best source, as direct as possible, and then start inserting lengths of cable you plan on using. 20, 30 feet. Could be even be 10 feet. If, you if you're not hearing the loss, you're done. But you're gonna hear the loss, and it's gonna be surprising, and it doesn't matter whether you spent a fortune on the, on the cable. You might be very upset, because they mostly have poor transient response, and they sound lossy in color. Okay, cool. Well, I agree with you. I found in my experience in the studio just simply A, B, comparing things and finding one thing and then try something else. When it doesn't sound as good, you notice it. But again, an A, B is not a test. That is a comparison. Okay, fair that enough, fair enough. That is kind of a waste of time in this case because you're not hearing what's being lost. I figured out how to put back what's being lost by making a cable that starts and stops much faster. Okay, cool. This is our new Oasis microphone analog cable. Uh, it is completely optimized for minimum audible loss in the test, not comparison of cables. Right. This is the same kind of cable. We're actually using one of these fine cables for our interview today, so just want to let you know that, Rockstars. You know, without doing the test, people can't fathom this. We actually do a headphone test where we plug a high-res audio player directly into the headphones, and then we switch to the cable that came with the headphones. Well, the difference between the two is, is generally pretty obvious to people with good ears. It's compressed, it's glossy, it's a little colored. It's just not nearly as good. Nice, I okay. cables that I can plug in in place of that that sound much closer to the direct connection. Well, so um, David, thank you so much for telling us all about your wonderful cables. Can you let the rock stars know how they can find you guys and learn more about you? Yeah, please visit our website, wireworldproaudio.com. All right, Groovy. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Rockstars, for watching this video, and thanks for doing this with us. Thank you. Remember, Rockstars, if you enjoyed this video here with David, please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video. And drop in a comment right below in the comment section and let us know what you think about this, where you'd like to see your sound better through cabling, and let us know how our voices sounded on this cable right here because this is uh, coming straight from Wireworld. Thanks for watching. Cheers.